This is a presentation of the uh, Redflow R510 US uh, ZBM calibration process. Uh, so let's uh, have a look at that, shall we? Here's a calibration cycle I've prepared earlier. Uh, we're looking here at a uh, view uh, presentation, the, uh, the data viewer. Screen grab from that. And uh, I've, I've highlighted the important uh, measurements to be aware of. Uh, firstly, let's state the goal. Uh, the goal is to reproduce factory test conditions. That is a full capacity cycle at a, at a nominal 25 amp uh, DC charge and, and discharge uh, without the uh, hiatus of a, a float stage. So between the, the charge and the discharge, no, no gap there. So how are you going to achieve that? Well, we want uh, 25 amps DC charging the battery. Uh, at the nominal US grid voltages, uh, this one here around uh, 210, 213 or so, uh, we need to select 8 amps AC as the inverter current in the um, power control uh, and they're a cycle duration of 9.5 hours and with that we see the state of charge getting up to slightly under 100% and 240 amp hours which is the sort of scale we're looking for and then on the discharge, uh, slightly lower inverter current, uh, 5.8 amps AC, uh, which will give you on average uh, 25 amps uh, DC over the cycle. And that's going to take about nine hours to occur. You need to allow another couple of hours for the strip uh, to happen. Now, before we actually go through uh, this, uh, this process, uh, just uh, quickly have a look at uh, what's, what's going to happen here. Uh, from the data viewer, we're going to make a CSV file. Uh, we're then going to paste that into the analysis spreadsheet. That's uh, the R510 US ZBM analysis uh, XLS. Uh, and when we do that, we're going to end up with a chart like this, exactly what we saw in the data viewer, only now with this significantly with the numbers, the analysis results. What's actually happening here is the spreadsheet's performing a, a time integration uh, over the voltage and current to give us uh, essentially the energy values but a few other statistics. Uh, we're looking at average uh, current here, uh, total amp hours, so the so-called useful amp hours. Uh, we've got a voltaic efficiency down the bottom here. These are colomic efficiency and then the product is the energy efficiency. And then we've even got a temperature compensated uh, for a nominal 30 degrees C, the temperature compensated value uh, over here. And then the final stage, uh, when we've got those statistics, uh, this one's a little bit hard to read, but we're going to uh, paste those numbers into the uh, chart history, what I've called the ZBM calibration history chart. Uh, you get a linear result there, you can then compress those with a sort, uh, and then you've got uh, the compacted uh, results that will let you do a chart. Uh, the, uh, the critical one probably is the uh, energy efficiency of the calibration cycle. Okay, so here I am in the, the data viewer and this is exactly the, the cycle we were looking at before, so I won't bore you with that. Uh, I want to export it, so I'm going to the list, do it twice, there we go. Uh, save all, and where's that going to go? Uh, nowhere interesting on here. Let me find that before I bore you. Okay, now I think I've got it sorted. We want CSV and uh, there's my naming convention. Uh, this one happens to be on the 30th of May, so 3005 is good. So save. Yes, it's already there. Okay, so uh, that's that bit done. All right. The next stage. Uh, this I've opened up the uh, the analysis uh, XLS. So this is uh, what it's going to look like. So I want to come to this page, the RTU data, uh, and I'm going to open the CSV. All right. Open the CSV. This is the one I want here. Open, and then I'm going to block there and copy that and then I want to find the analysis one here okay so I'm in the RTU data and then I'm going to paste the values okay <clears throat> nothing changed there because it was the same file uh, the calculation page is where all the, uh, the number crunching is done I really need to know about that 
Uh, it's a reasonably well exercised, pretty confident all those calculations are right. And then finally we've got the, uh, the results here now. Uh, so that's the key information, uh, the, the efficiency numbers are really what we're after. Um, so the next thing is I'm going to block out that section there and take a copy. Now I'm going to open that uh, calibration uh, history chart and I put the, uh, the instruction steps here to remind you what to do uh, and the first thing is to paste that information down the bottom here, just the values, there we go, and um, I'm just keeping one line in between there, blank line, and you can have as many of these as you like, uh, just copy that in the same place, and the formulas just bring out all the necessary values there. Uh, if you're doing more than one of these at a time, uh, I'm going to do the values there, okay. Uh, always gets the date mixed up, so if I go to uh, here and here, there we are, I got the dates right, and um, actually I think that's the same as that line there, but the idea is that now our chart, okay, it's encompassing all of that, uh, that data, uh, is showing us uh, here the uh, energy efficiency temperature compensated is what that's meant to be, um, over a, a number of cycles we could actually chart it by date. It would be very useful to actually know what the um, amp hours or energy throughput was uh, over that time. But at the very least, the energy efficiency uh, for each calibration cycle that you perform is, is what we're really after in this chart, the ZBM calibration history. So there we go.